Hey, what's going on, fam? Kyle Henderson along with Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com coming to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Another big weekend in Tuscaloosa. Tons of visitors. We saw top recruits on campus, including official visitors who are still wrapping things up. A few new offers out there. And to talk about all this recruiting coverage, we've got Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com. Bone, action-packed week wrapped up today, uh, June 6th. Let's kind of dive into it a little bit. Yeah, obviously it was a big week and uh, and also a big weekend. You know, we talked about a lot of the uh, top visitors who camped and uh, visited Tuscaloosa throughout the week, and then all of a sudden we had the weekend happen, and we had different visitors in town, whether that was for camp, whether that was just an unofficial visit or official visitors. Seven official visitors on campus this weekend, and uh, we're going to talk more about those guys on BamaInsider.com. So uh, you can go on BamaInsider.com, get the very latest about the official visitors. I will say that you know, just from talking to a few guys who were there, guys like Shamar James, Kenyatta Jackson, uh, you know, these guys had a great time in Tuscaloosa this weekend. We're going to have a lot more uh, on Bama Insider. But we saw a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of kids on campus this weekend that were uh, that were not there for unofficial business, guys who uh, were either hanging out or, uh, or just participating in camp. You know, these guys include Justice Finkley, the four-star defensive lineman from Hewitt Trustful, uh, Jeremiah Alexander, uh, the number one player in the state of Alabama. You know, both of those guys were hanging out in Tuscaloosa on Saturday, spending time together, but also obviously spending a lot of time uh, with the coaching staff. These are two big in-state uh, recruits for Alabama, and you know, certainly two guys that they really want uh, as a part of their recruiting class. And then you had some other, uh, you know, really elite uh, prospects that Alabama has been going after that they're, you know, certainly in the mix for, including Devin Moore, uh, defensive back out of uh, Naples, Florida, made his trip to Tuscaloosa, spent, spent about three days at Alabama, really, uh, really enjoyed his time, and you know, I had a chance to, uh, to talk to him, and you know, he said that he really just didn't even want to leave Tuscaloosa, so that if he could come back to Alabama for every visit, uh, he certainly would, and you know, this is a kid who uh, is very high on Alabama's recruiting wish list, uh, he did not have to participate participate in camp um, it says he's going to try to get back up uh, as quickly as possible you also had a lot of you know top 2023 20, recruits in Tuscaloosa including uh, LT Overton the number one player in the country uh, defensive lineman out of Georgia and Peter Woods uh, also uh, you know one of the top five overall players in the country uh, out of Thompson High School another defensive lineman you know had an opportunity to speak to uh, uh, Reuben Owens uh, top 25 uh, overall player uh, from the state of Texas, from El Campo, Texas, been committed to uh, Texas since February, but you know has uh, kept an open mind and has continued uh, to show interest in a lot of other schools, including uh, Alabama and LSU. And you know, spent Friday and Saturday in Tuscaloosa, worked out at running back, uh, you know, worked a little bit in the slot. Uh, you know, they can spread them out. And, you know, he really liked that. Really enjoyed meeting with uh, with Coach Gillespie and Coach Saban, and uh, you know they certainly have uh, turned the heat up on him uh, over the last uh, you know last couple months. So. You know, a lot, a lot of big names in Tuscaloosa. A lot of, a lot of information to, uh, to kind of take in. And uh, I know sometimes it may seem, seem a little overwhelming because you know there's so much content, so much information, so many kids that are on campus, and you know, it's, and it's every single day. You know, first day of June hits, kids start visiting, kids start camping, and you know, Alabama has seven camps in the month of June. So you have a lot of different kids that are coming into camp, but you also have a lot of prospects that are coming in for official visits and it's just about every single day uh throughout this month so a lot of uh, a lot of information to uh to really soak in and um, i think it also helps alabama you know really try to figure out you know who is going to be their top tier targets uh in this class you know you, you have a list of you know the big board who's on the board right now you know who has offers but you know who earns those offers when they come to camp who moves up that recruiting board who moves down the recruiting board those are a lot of questions that get answered when these kids that you know either show up at camp work out or at least just get a, an accurate height and weight uh you know do they look sloppy do are, are they smaller than uh you know what they uh <laughs> what their height and weight says on rivals.com so uh you get a chance to get a lot of those questions answered when these kids visit but you also get a chance to get to know them better get to know them on a personal level not just from a skill standpoint, but get a chance to, uh, you know, communicate with them, sit down with them. Are they coachable? Are they somebody that you want 
uh, in your program and that you want to be around other players in your program for years to come. So there's a lot to, uh, to really take in and, um, you know, you really have to kind of comb through all of it and figure out, um, you know, who really is Alabama's premier targets and you know, who's potentially going to here in the future. Here with Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com, Kyle Henderson of Bama Insider. Remember to hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. Bone, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. It's not often that you get an opportunity to um, speak with somebody from Sweden who has an opportunity to come to Tuscaloosa to visit with Nick Saban. Tell us a little bit about this Swedish tight end we've been hearing about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll get, I'll get his name wrong, but uh, but Theodore uh, Milan uh, Ostrom, I'm sure that's. <laughs> I'm sure that's wrong, but uh, yeah, I had an opportunity to uh, to speak to him, and you know, our our conversation was uh, through text messages. It wasn't over the phone, so I didn't have a chance to uh, to ask him about you know how to pr- pronounce his name here in the future. So this guy from Alabama doesn't butcher his name for the next uh, next couple of years. But uh, but you know, he had a great showing at Alabama's camp on on Saturday. And this is a big kid. He measured in at six foot five and a half. 242 pounds and and uh, really impressed I mean, you know impressed enough to get an offer from from nick saban got a chance to sit down with coach saban and talk to him in his office uh, after his showing at the camp and you know he was just blown away that he called his family was back home in sweden and told them about the offer they were really excited and pumped and you know he said he's followed alabama for a for a long time and uh, you know, really likes the program likes the culture and is even already talking to his parents about potentially coming back to tuscaloosa for a game uh this season if uh you know if that potentially might work out for them so you know, this is somebody that we'll be fo- you know that we'll be following over the course of the next couple of years and uh and seeing if alabama uh could potentially land his commitment here in the future but obviously this is a big offer for him he really had a great time and um, uh, I'm, I'm really intrigued uh by him and you know certainly going to be uh somebody that i think alabama fans are going to be intrigued by for uh, for the next couple of years alabama also offered class of 2022 defensive back austin osbury from the state of louisiana a little bit closer than uh sweden obviously <laughs> um what can you tell us about uh osbury and kind of what's the the recruiting intel there yeah, you know, with these camps, you see a lot of a lot of different players in the twenty twenty three. You know, maybe even a few twenty twenty four guys that get offers. Not a lot of twenty twenty two guys are going to get offered because a lot of those guys already have offers from Alabama. And you know, usually when these camps pop up, you know, it usually turns into either you know, it's going to be a committable offer or you know, Alabama is probably going to pass on him. But you don't really see a ton of new offers. Uh, but we have seen a few new offers in this 2022 class this week, uh, including one to Austin Osbury. I, you know, I think he was one of maybe two players in the 2022 class who received an offer from Alabama on Saturday uh, out of Baton Rouge University Lab School, same school that produced Alabama linebacker Christian Harris. And you know, I talked to Austin yesterday after his offer, and you know, he was really excited about it. And uh, says he did, he doesn't have any favorites just yet. He's still kind of. Um, his offer list is still kind of taking off. He does have an offer from Alabama and LSU uh, and a few other schools, but uh, not many. I mean, I, I think it, the offer list is less than 10 right now. So he's starting to go to some camps and pick up some more interest. And you know, it seems like his stock will really kind of explode over the course of the next few months. But he worked out at safety – or excuse me, he worked out at corner on Saturday but says that you know he plans on playing safety in college, and that's the position that Alabama's recruiting him to play. He said he just wanted to kind of show off his versatility uh, at the position, but uh, you know, he he really liked Alabama a lot, and you know this was a uh, this is a kid that you know we'll see kind of what happens. Could end up turning into another Alabama LSU recruiting battle. Uh, we'll also have to kind of wait and see what happens with uh, with maybe some of these other defensive backs because you know we talked about this the other day um, in terms of Traquan Fagans and Antonio Kite you know what happened with them on at, at the camp earlier this week um, you know were they going to have the chance to commit to Alabama well you know there's still a lot of other defensive backs that are going to be coming loose of this uh, this summer um, and we talked about a lot of them and you know we I mentioned uh, Devin Moore earlier uh, but you have guys like Terrence Brooks and Earl Little Jr. and Damani Jackson and Denver Harris and uh, Isaiah Bond and, and uh, Jake Pope, all these guys uh, that are going to be visiting over the course of the next few weeks, uh, you know, before the end of June. So, 
kind of really have to kind of see what happens with some of those guys. Not saying he's not a take because I think Alabama, you know, really likes him, but he waits, uh, you know, a while to make a decision. Alabama gets these other guys on campus and makes some other decisions, and you know, some kids decide to make commitments. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to kind of see how this defensive back class unfolds over the course uh, of the next few months. Bo, and a couple more things I wanted to ask you about, um, a couple more prospects, rather. Um, is it Najee Harris, another Najee Harris that Alabama is recruiting? Yes, I know uh, in this past recruiting class, Alabama landed another Devontae Smith. Najee Harris is not spelled the same, but it's pronounced the same out of the class of 23. Please tell us more. Yeah, how about that? Uh, you know, could Alabama potentially land uh, Najee Harris, but uh, this one on the offensive line? Uh, you know, you know, like I said, it is spelled differently, so uh, uh, you know people will look at it and not think that it's pronounced Najee, but you know, that's what he told uh, Tony Sukalis the other day, or, uh, or not the other day, but a couple about a month or so ago when he interviewed him for the first time. And Tony did a great interview with uh, Najee the other day on Bam Insider, and you know, he was blown away by everything he saw in Tuscaloosa. Uh, it was kind of a short visit. He visited on Friday. Uh, they had, they were taking you know multiple vi- on Friday, so he was in Tuscaloosa on Friday morning and you know, had a chance to just uh, you know spend some time with Coach Save and Coach uh, Doug Marone and uh, you know really liked everything that he saw and heard. And uh, I think Alabama's probably in good position early on for him. Um, I, I, he's out of IMG Academy. IMG's produced uh, you know plenty of top talent, especially on the offensive line, uh, especially several guys who have gone uh, to the University of Alabama, including a couple of offensive linemen and Evan Neal and J.C. Latham. So I think this could potentially be you know another one. And uh, you know there's another IMG kid, offensive lineman, that's going to be coming up later this month, and uh, and Tyler Booker. So Alabama potentially gets Tyler Booker on board. Um, you know this could potentially be the fourth guy uh, in the next couple of years. Bone well, uh, to wrap it up. Ty Simpson made a visit to Tuscaloosa. We showed highlights of um, of him working out with Bill O'Brien. Um, after speaking with Simpson, I mean, how big is it that Alabama gets their quarterback, the leader of this class, on campus to work out with offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien? Yeah, I thought it was great, and and so did uh, so did Ty. I mean, he really enjoyed the time he spent with uh, with Coach O'Brien. You know, he had a lot of good things to say, and you know, even though Ty's been committed to Alabama since February. This was the first time that he met Coach O'Brien um, and got a chance to work out with him. And, you know, really said that, you know, Coach O'Brien taught him a lot of things that uh, that he taught um, or that he helped with uh, uh, with Tom Brady. And, uh, you know, really talked about, uh, you know, just, um, just everything that they did in terms of their workout and uh, everything that he learned from him. So he really enjoyed it. He really enjoyed, you know, being around other players. Really enjoyed being around other recruits. You know, mentioned some of the other recruits that he's going after, and specifically Walter Nolan. Uh, mentioned Evan Stewart, uh, Rivals 100 wide receiver out of uh, out of Texas, and he's also going to come back for the uh, for that final weekend official visit weekend in June. He was originally going to wait. He was going to wait until the fall to take his official, but you know, told me that you know there's no way that he can't come back. Uh, for his official visit later this month uh, when all these top recruits are visiting uh, Tuscaloosa, uh, including JT Tullamaloa, uh, who's going to be visiting uh, on that weekend as well. So it's going to be a big weekend. But there's a lot of big weekends coming up for Alabama. It's, it's not just the first weekend or the last weekend of June. It's every single weekend of June. There's a lot of top talent. Uh, and, and really throughout the week, you know, there's kids that are going to be stopping in. There's going to be camps uh, going on through entire month of June and um, you know we got a lot of content going on on BamaInsider.com right now. All right good stuff Bone. To get the latest recruiting coverage on Alabama Crimson Tide football head on over to BamaInsider.com. Promo code for free 30 days is simply roll tide. We'll be back next time with a new video right here on BamaInsider.com for Andrew Bone, Kyle Henderson. We'll catch you next time right here at BamaInsider.com.